Uh, I cannot give a, an answer on behalf of uh, Arafat, he's already dead, but uh, we sat together with Clinton, we put on the table a proposal that covered probably 90 plus percent of whatever he can think of and didn't try to dictate it, we never told him uh, take it or leave it. We just asked him to take it as a basis for negotiation. Uh, we told him you can have a reservation from any given paragraph or, or from all of them. Put them on the paper and continue. And the fact that he rejected it and deliberately went to terror means that he was not right for whatever reasons. Probably was afraid of the kind of more gray area of daily life in a, in a new Palestinian entity where instead of being an heroic figure for his nation, he might have to dive uh, into education and uh, social security and uh, sewage and, and you name it. Or probably just thought that, uh, that uh, nations should be born in blood, not in uh, negotiated, uh, um, negotiated agreement. Uh, which happens in, in uh, air-conditioned rooms. I cannot penetrate it, but the reality was that with Arafat at that time, there was no way to, to move further. And uh, it should not uh, kind of make us uh, totally pessimistic. I'm still confident that there is a way uh, forward and it will be found. The right timing and, and circumstances will be found to, to have this negotiation renewed and what I've said after Camp David is that when the time comes, whether it takes 15 uh, or 50 years, uh, it's already more than 15 years, you will need magnifying glass to see the difference between what was already on the table and uh, Camp David and what will be achieved. And people will ask, raise the question immediately afterward, why the hell it took us so long and what, what exactly blocked us from taking the tough, painful decision, it's not easy decision, which should have led to, to normal relation between us and Palestinians.